Hey everyone, it's Thomas Wooden Railway and it's time for another gigantic unboxing video. This is sort of an annual tradition for me. It's something that I've done the past couple of years and I want to keep that tradition going. So here we are. Um, I have a number of different items that I'm going to unbox. We have some newer Mattel items. We also have some items from the Learning Curve and Tomy eras. We have some destinations in the back from the early 2000s. And I'm even going to unbox some track pieces that are from the 1990s as well. So, as you can see up top there, we also have something that is not Thomas Wooden Railway related, but it still is a Wooden Railway engine, so I'm going to unbox that as well. So guys, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and let's get started. All right, everyone, let's kick this unboxing video off with an item that I am very excited to get out of the packaging. This is 2012 Tommy Sir Handel. And if you don't know much about the Thomas Wooden Railway line, then I'm going to give you a short little rundown about the history of this item in just a moment. But before we do that, let's take one last beautiful look at Tommy Sir Handel, new in box. This item is pretty hard to find. And on the front here, you'll notice there's a price sticker, $13.99. It's from a place called Drods, which is short for Drods Derailment. I actually just made a video about my trip there, um, so go check that out. But this was one of the very cool items I found laying around. Anyway, Tommy Sir Handel, hopefully I'll find another one like you in the box sooner rather than later, but it's time to release you from your plastic sarcophagus. So, um, this version of Sir Handel is pretty rare. He was only made for a short amount of time. Like I said, he's 2011, 2012, right before the brand was sold to Mattel. And I'm pretty sure he was released because of the impending Blue Mountain Mystery movie that was released in fall 2012. So, all right, let's bring him out. Actually, on the back of the box here, it does, it, the back of the box is copyrighted 2011, but I'm pretty sure this item is meant for 2012. So here we go, folks. 2012 Tomy Sir Handel. The thing about all of the Tomy engines is that they are notoriously known for having very poor faces. Tomy was only in charge of the line for a year or two, and like the Thomas and the Percy and the James and all the basically the steam team engines, they have really horrible faces. But they actually knocked it out of the park with these narrow gauge engines, which is so befuddling. But this Sir Handel has so many details that I, I am just kind of blown away by. Um, we see side rods on the side here. Um, probably one of the best looking Tomy models of all time is Scarlowy, which is the one I use in my series. There are just so many details. And it's a bit strange because at this point, you know, Tommy was getting ready uh, was getting ready to get rid of the line. So you'd think that the toys would just decrease in quality by a lot, but Sir Handel absolutely looks fantastic. Um, I, I love the, the red right here and the red on the back. Um, I think the Scarlowy model has windows right here. That would have been nice on Sir Handel, but this is still just incredible. I'm really torn as to whether to use this engine in my series or not. I've used the 2008 Sir Handel for a really long time, over 10 years. And that Sir Handel is really nice. This one is probably more accurate. Um, definitely a CGI face right here. But this, this Sir Handel, regardless of whether I use it or not, I'm so glad to have it in my collection. It's really, really beautiful. Other than that, I mean, if you hear some bells jingling in the background, that's my cat going crazy. But I've already unboxed this item, so I don't want to stop. I, I can't really um, put it back in the box because, well, you know. So anyway, that's the beauty of these live videos. This Sir Handel is really amazing. It says Tommy uh, UK underneath. And yeah, I'm really torn as to whether to use this Sir Handel in my series or not. Um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of conduct an informal poll in the comments below if you guys think I should use this one or not. Regardless, I'm so happy to have it in my collection. Um, it really is a thing of beauty. And I have done a review slash discussion of Sir Handel in the past. It was all the way back in 2011, right before this model came out. And I compared the, the old style Sir Handel from the 1990s, early 2000s to the, uh, the Learning Curve one from 2008 that had uh, been released a few years earlier. Um, yeah, so we actually there's actually three versions of Sir Handel floating around here. This one's pretty hard to find. Um, I'm very, very lucky that I stumbled upon it at Draws Derailment, so very happy to have this in my collection. Anyway, I think that's enough on Sir Handel. I'll put him off to the side, and I'll bring in the next item. 
here we go with our next item. It's the James Goes Buzz Buzz Limited Edition. One of these things. They also made a Thomas Comes to Breakfast. And in my previous unboxing video, I looked at the A Better View for Gordon one, which was really, really cool. So as you can tell, I found another one of these. It's very, very, very beat up, but I got it for a great price. I have, um, I've had one of these in my collection for a while. This is the nicer one that I've had. Um, for a couple of years. I'm going to keep this one in the box. I found another one for a really great deal that I'm going to unbox because as you can see the packaging is just all over the place. So um, I guess I'm, I'm two thirds of the way done collecting this series of limited edition um, engines with their their backgrounds, backdrop, something like that. So this was um, this came with the a better view for Gordon thing as well. It's a limited edition certificate of authenticity, fifty thousand runs. Um, I think that is the same amount of. Um, items that were made for the A Better View for Gordon, but I'm pretty sure the Thomas Comes to Breakfast one has a higher run, maybe like 100,000 or something like that. So we got a pamphlet, very cool. Um, with all these pamphlets, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, it's been such a long time since I did an unboxing video. Um, these pamphlets I throw into a big giant bag and I just keep them there. I've looked at these pamphlets before in the past, they're really, really cool, but I don't throw them away, I definitely keep them. And then we have a limited edition, James Goes Buzz Buzz character card. And James looks really, really good. Let's see what the back says. Sometimes these have notorious spelling errors. James the Splendid, splendid Red Engine soon became James the Red Nose Engine after a swarm of bees leave the comfort of their beehive for the warmth of James's boiler. That's not too bad of a description. Some of these are, get pretty cringy, and but that one's actually okay. So let's actually get this out of here. And like my previous unboxing videos, I am going to keep all of the, the packaging until the end, and then we can, um, we can see all of the trash that has accumulated. So, um, let's see. Oh, we got one of these here. So I have some tools off to the side here that I can, I forgot, I think it was the Better View for Gordon one that I unboxed um, in the 2018 unboxing video that came with a Murdoch character card. That that was a weird unboxing video, by the way. So much, so much weird stuff happened there. Um, all right, so we got one of these. These are just um, almost like twist ties. You just gotta untwist them and then we can free James. Um, what you'll notice is when I bring James back around, you'll see that the station says Ellsbridge and that is incorrect. All of this happened at Tidmouth Station. Just one of those things that I think was overlooked in the manufacturing and design process, but nevertheless, it's still, uh, still a cool item. So it's almost free. Let's see. So this apparently was new in box, and I, I believe it is new in box. Oh, this, is that like a sticker? Ooh, I might be able to peel that. Uh, let's let's just get James out of here first. So, um, let's see, what number are we? 21,943 out of 50. Almost, almost halfway in the middle there. So, I think, last time did I just pull on this? Okay, James's tender wants to leave. That's a good thing. I'm gonna try to keep um, each of these unboxing segments as short as I can because I know people really don't like long videos on YouTube. YouTube doesn't like long videos for sure. So I'll try to keep everything brief, but then if something crazy happens and we get a 24 minute unboxing thing on the grain loader, well, I can't say I, I, <laughs> I said I'm sorry and I warned you guys in advance. So let's, this is, these are always really fun to get out. James, are you free? Almost. Okay. So James is free, got his tender free, and then let me clean up the wires here. Yeah, so doesn't it's not the cleanest thing. I'm saying ugh, I'm gonna need to clean this up, and my biggest fear has been realized. Um, I actually bought this on a Craigslist listing. And as you can tell by the package, even though this item is new in box, um, some certain bugs and insects have been rummaging around in here. So they've left behind their remains and I'm definitely gonna need to clean this up. It's kind of nasty, but can't do anything much about it now. So <laughs> we have James here. James is definitely the coolest part. Look how shocked and surprised he is. I've had one in the, one in the box for a really long time. Um, here he is, but I've just had to stare at him from afar, haven't been able to get a close-up look. So, 
a lot of good detailing on this. Um, as I, it looks that actually looks like a little paint thing right there. It doesn't it doesn't feel like a scratch or anything. That face though, I should probably get it centered. That face is uh, is pretty good. Not gonna lie. I love how these versions have buffers, and some of the talking engines from around this time period also have like a, a coupling. I would have loved to have seen that rolled over into Thomas Wooden Railway, um, the other engines from the line. That never really happened. Although there are some engines out there, like off the top of my head, Scruff has buffers, Philip has buffers. It's just kind of weird where they would put them. So. Uh, James looks spectacular. I think I read online that this mold with the bees was reused for the Thomas and the Bees two-pack. It's Thomas and a bee car, like a honey car, I want to say. Um, that would make sense. But the face, the face is top-notch. Um, really, really impressed with that. Underneath, he's officially known as James Goes Buzz Buzz. And we got some buffers back here as well. And then the tender, there's actually no buffers on the tender full focus and then whereas these bees are part of the the plastic mold for the smoke box the bees on the rest of James and on his tender are just painted on still look really really nice this is a, um, a very nice tribute to a classic Thomas and Friends episode so along with a better view for Gordon and Thomas comes to breakfast I really like these packs I don't think I mean they made what 50,000 50,000 maybe a hundred thousand maybe Gordon was 25,000 I can't remember honestly um, but they were so-called limited edition I don't know how limited that is you know this was mid 2000s when Thomas was all the rage so who knows you know they obviously I mean I see these on shelves when I go around to all these old train and um, toy stores that haven't sold a lot of their Thomas merchandise in the past two decades these are usually sitting around and I just don't think they sell super well because they're kind of meant to be a displayed item, you know, with the stand here and everything like that. So what's so funny is that the front's so detailed and it's really meant to be put up against a wall or hung from a wall. There's even a hook on the back, but the back is so not detailed. Um, yes, this is back. Remember with Gordon, there's like this little magnet thing here that keeps it in place. It's, it's very entertaining. Um, so, it, you know, you can put it on a shelf and uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain point where James can be tilted and he still stays on the track right there. So, um, I'm two-thirds of the way done with this. I guess you would call it the limited edition collection, greatest moments collection, maybe. James looks great. Obviously, Ellsbridge Station is incorrect. If you really wanted to, you could just write Tidmouth over it. Um, let's see about... Oh, I think this can be peeled off. I don't know if I did this with Gordon or not. That was so long ago. But here we go. That's kind of nice. It protects the little emblem... The very metallic-y, gold metallic. Look at that. It's very beautiful. So these were some great items. Um, if they brought these back, um, in the in the wood range probably wouldn't buy them. But, you know, in a, in a perfect world, if Thomas Wood Rally returned with fully painted engines, um, you know, basically if Mattel had brought these back around 2014, 2015, I probably would have bought them. I don't, you know, you think of some of the greatest moments from engines and try to um, try to think of what you could, you know, combine them as and sell them as in a little pack like this but I think these packs weren't the most popular thing because they are viewed as like a collector's limited edition type thing that still doesn't really prevent a kid from coming up and you know throwing James around and you can incorporate this into a layout um, you know you got the track pieces right here and I have seen it done a couple of times on YouTube layouts if you don't have an Ellsbridge station hey you know what just ignore the the bees in the background and you know it looks pretty good so i've talked far too long about james goes buzz buzz but this is a really nice item i'm going to stick it up next to a better view for gordon over my shoulder here they're going to sit next to each other and maybe one day i'll actually get around to finding an extra version of thomas comes to breakfast the good news is that out of all the three packs thomas james and gordon Gordon and James are the hardest to find. So Thomas should be relatively easy. I mean, I see it on eBay all the time. I just got to find the right price. So maybe the next time I get around to doing an unboxing video, um, I'll have a Thomas Comes to Breakfast limited edition pack to unbox. So anyway, that is James Goes Buzz Buzz. Very nice. Got to clean up a little bit of the dirt and everything around there. But otherwise, it's a very nice item. 
So we've taken a look at a few engines to start off this unboxing video. Let's uh, dive into one of these big destinations. This is the scrapyard from either 2004, 2005. It says 2004 up here. I got this, um, you can see the sticker, at Drods for uh, $39.99. And then if you go and watch that unboxing video I did, you'll also um, see a sign that says all of the Thomas stuff was 20% off. So this was actually a little bit cheaper. Um, a visit to the scrapyard, I know it's at the top of the screen, a visit to the scrapyard is a smashingly good time. The uh, scrapyard keeps the island of Sodor clean and tidy. First, the lorry finds and delivers the old scrap cargo. Then after the cargo is crushed, right where my box is crushed, it's taken elsewhere to be used again and again. So I love this destination, um, always wanted it. I feel like I say that about a lot of destinations, but the scrapyard is such an ominous, um, almost villainous place on the island of Sodor, but it's, especially in my series, it's one of those places that's really never seen. It's taken on a lighter tone ever since Reg was introduced. Now the scrapyard's just kind of this, I don't know, like kind of bumbling place where, you know, nothing really bad ever happens. Um, as you can see though, we, we have this whole area right here that's not being used by anything. That's kind of unusual, so. Um, let's see, we got a pamphlet it looks like. Very nice. Learning curve. Oh, the good days of learning curve. Uh, brings back a lot of memories. That's why I love doing these unboxing videos. So it comes with this um, lorry here. It doesn't have a face or anything, but I'll leave this tied up just for a sec. There's actually something else. I think maybe that's the, the little box container that goes with the lorry. So... I don't want to tear up this box. Oh, cool, that just fell out. I bet, oh, those are actually, yeah, scrap pieces that can either be used with the, um, the scrap yard or the scrap lorry. All right. So this was an item that was not sold for super long. I think it had maybe two, one or two years. Um, I don't ever remember seeing this in stores, but then again, this is from the era where Learning Curve was just churning out stuff left and right. And if you weren't paying attention, you would miss some of this stuff that, you know, wasn't <laughs> wasn't sold for super long. So that was a very awkward un uh, way to unbox that. Um, we also have this right here. So this is the destination itself. And I think one of the reasons why it was not that popular is because it is a roadway destination. There is no track on this thing. I mean, you can ignore the stripes here and pretend, you know, I'm bringing an engine and stuff, but um, that's probably one of the reasons. This is from 2004, 2005. It's definitely from the era where Learning Curve was trying to really push the roadway stuff and it didn't really succeed. So, oh, this is cool. So I really don't have any idea how this destination works. Let's see, this crane moves back and forth. That is a nice touch. We have some gates at the back here that I presume, oh, hit the camera there, sorry. I presume these close and, and shut, are they are they manual like this? Or you'd think there would be, a, this is, seems like the thing that would, there would be a button for. But I, you can manually close them, it's a little bit sticky. This, oh, all right. I guess that's the, the trash com compactor, we can call that. We got some nice detailing on the side. This is very, very learning curve. Great detailing in some places, and then just completely blank in others. Um, Sodor Scrapyard, so very, very excited to include this in my collection. Let's bring out the lorry right here. Um, yeah, I think another reason, I think if you had included, I don't know, one of the Horde lorries, or maybe introduced a, uh, put, if you put a face on this thing, it automatically becomes more desirable. So we have the Sodor Scrap Lorry right here. It has, to me, this wheel arrangement is very reminiscent of Butch. I don't have a Butch nearby, but that's the vibe that I'm getting right there. This is actually very long, though. Um, but because you have this big carrying area. I actually, I've seen pictures of this online and I did not realize how, how long this scrap lorry was. So I presume you're going to be able to fit these two things in there. But this is a very cool, I guess, you know, background type vehicle that you can just throw in wherever you please. Um, but yeah, I, as a, as a kid, I did not care for this type of generic stuff. Nowadays, I have more appreciation for it, but imagine this had a face. I mean, you don't even have to give it a name. 
it can be something unofficial, you know, and it, it could it still be labeled the Sodor Scrap Lorry, but you put a face on there, and then it allows the kid to decide, you know, what they want to name it. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, fits right in there. I'll put this off to the side just for a moment, and let's unbox our last thing as part of this scrapyard deal. Presume these are the scrap packages. I've seen these on eBay. Yep. Wow, these are long. Okay. So the good and bad things here. They're longer. Oh, wow. They're soft. Uh, very. It looks like an accordion. Oh, yeah. It scrunches up. That's pretty cool. So, yes, I have seen these on eBay very rarely. I don't think I've ever seen them scrunched up, though, like this. So this is, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it reminds me of an accordion, honestly. You get one of the, you put this in one front of one of the wooden railway figures and it just acts like an accordion. So, um, very, very interesting material. There's obviously, there's like a, a spring in the middle of this that either contracts or expands, depending on what you want it to do. But yeah, this is really cool. So what I was beginning to say was the good here, Definitely unique pieces of um, cargo that you aren't going to find anywhere else. The bad thing is, is since they're so long, they are not going to fit in a cargo car or a lorry. Actually, I bet, I bet if you scrunch it up like this, it'll fit in a cargo car. I guess that's kind of the cool, uh, the cool middle area for all this. So very, very cool. Let's bring the, the truck over. Sorry, the scrap lorry because we are in the UK after all. So one of these fits perfectly in there. And then you were to scrunch it up, and you can't can't fit two of them. You can put them vertical though. That makes things a little bit more interesting. I can see a story revolving around this and the truck tipping over and everything. So, um, talk about oddly satisfying. The perfect fit right in there. Very very nice. So that's that's a really cool look. And I had no idea. I was expecting a very hard cargo like material. Um, but no, it's the best way to describe it is it's like an accordion. So I'm actually very impressed with this item. However, I totally understand why it was not a success. And honestly, if you're looking at toys in the mid 2000s for your Thomas Wooden Railway merchandise line, why would you spend money on something like this when you can get something else out there that comes with an engine or you know anything with a face and especially especially the road part? I mean, looking back on it. As someone who has uh, way too much Thomas Wooden Railway stuff, these road-only uh, destinations are really cool, and I'm going to unbox at least one more in the second part of this unboxing video. But when you're just starting your Thomas Wooden Railway collection and you have a very small tabletop layout, this is not really the, the item that you want. Um, you're mostly focused on track, you're focused on getting engines, and yeah, this just is kind of a waste of space. So probably would have sold way better if this was track but they were pushing the road thing at the time so I'm guessing so here's here's the cool part I'll tilt it up and it just contracts oh that's as far as it goes okay so you're basically like a trash compactor the scrapyard recycle center whatever you want to call it um, and then, that, man, that's so cool. It just, there, there's no, there's no problem with bringing it back to its full length or anything like that. This crane up top here is really cool, but it appears as this magnet does not have a, you know, uh, a knob or anything to, uh, change the length of the string. So I guess the premise here is that the lorry comes in. Actually, let's do this correctly. Room, 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 lorry comes in. Bust through the gates, maybe. Bit of bit of a struggle there, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, so the lorry comes in, he stops. You have your scrap piece over here that needs to be compacted. Sorry, you guys can't see that super well. Alright, and then you bring your crane over, and it is magnetic. You can see the magnet. Oh. Do you guys see the the string shortens in the middle there? Long over here, short in the middle, long over there. Okay, so it t the string technically does move uh, in a very weird way. So it doesn't, this is where you're gonna have to, oh, look at that actually. So the reason why um, this didn't immediately clip onto this is because I had it um, trapped in here so tight that it was stuck in there. So you guys saw it pop up. It's on the ground right now. It's not connected. Sorry the angle's bad. It's not connected right now. I let it go. Oh wait, wrong thing. I'm gonna move it up and into the lorry. 
That's pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. And then the lorry drives away, room, 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 with his compacted scrap pieces right there. So wow, this item kind of blew away my expectations. Didn't think it would be this good. I'm still a little confused about the gates here. I don't see a lever to, to flip this. You kind of gotta get your fingers in there, and obviously it's easy, easier for little kids. A little bit of a challenge for me though, but it's kind of a nice way to, if you want to block the road off or something like that, that's a great way to do it. So, wow, that that very, very surprising item right there. I'm glad I bought it. 40 bucks wasn't bad either. I don't know exactly what it sold for back in the day, but um, I'd say if it had a price tag around, around 30 bucks or so, since you're not getting any special engines, you're not getting any track, you know, it really is just a road, destination which wasn't too popular at the time and these things still aren't popular um probably would have sold a lot better but i am pleasantly surprised that is a great item so that is the soda scrapyard everybody looking at the box yeah that appears to be it all right well that was a very cool item glad to introduce it in my collection let's move on to the next one so we're on to our fourth item in this massive unboxing video and I just realized I've actually have not taken a look at a Mattel item. We've looked at Tony stuff and learning curve stuff, but I'll bring out one of the single engines I have to unbox. This is Fisher Price slash Mattel Dash from 2012, technically more like 2013 is when it got released. And you're probably wondering, Thomas Wynn Railway, why on earth are you unboxing Mattel Dash. It's no secret. There's there's some engines out there that I don't like, and the logging locos are definitely one of them. But really quickly, I got it for $12.99. I'm trying to remember where I got this. Um, I just took a big tour of the East Coast and went around to so many different train stores that I'm having a hard time remembering where I got what. But anyway, um, this is a recent addition to my uh, Thomas Wood Railway collection. Hasn't been some of these items like the scrapyard we just took a look at. I've had for a while now. Um, it's been over a year, and we'll actually take a look at even some items that have been in my possession even longer. Um, but here's the thing, you know, Thomas Wooden Railway is unfortunately um, not what it used to be. It's not even the same company, the same brand anymore. So I have to pick up these Mattel items when I can, otherwise I may not be able to get them one day. So um, Dash was a 2013 uh, release. And so he came with a pamphlet right here, which is stock standard. Um, but basically, from my understanding, the first release engines came with pamphlets, and then like the second wave of engines, that's when they got rid of them. So we have uh, Mattel Dash, and uh, really, I, I have the logging locos in my possession, and I'll bring Learning Curve Dash over here in a second. But yeah, I'm just I'm not a fan of the logging locos. Um, but like I said earlier, you know, the way the merchandise is ranging, or excuse me, it's running, um, don't know how much longer these are going to be available. So when I saw this in a store, I actually picked it up, and uh, yeah, here we are. So I have Learning Curve Dash over here. From the side, they look pretty much exactly the same. Um, the detailing right here is a little bit different. The, I mean, the, the, the colors are the same and everything. I mean, the back... Very, very, uh, very, very symmetrical so far. The big area of change is the face. Um, let's see here. So we have Learning Curve Dash right there. And, well, that's, that's interesting. So the front part here has been changed. I was, I was making, I was looking underneath. I'm seeing the blue over here and I'm like, wait, did I grab bash by accident? So anyway, you guys can see what I'm looking at. There, there's, you know, orange right here, but it's blue on the new one. That's very, very interesting. I guess that was done because the whole thing with bash and dash is that they have the same colors, but they're switched and yada, yada, yada. So Anyway, um, I, I, I guess I, I see it now. It took me a little bit by surprise though, but the big difference here, in fact, the only major difference between the learning curve and the Fisher Price versions are the faces. This is the learning curve one right here, has a very, uh, I don't know, it, it's a very learning curve type face from 2010. Let's put it that way. The faces weren't exactly on point for a majority of learning curves, um, you know, tenure as the major Thomas Wooden Railway manufacturer. You take a look, you know, the 2003 faces for the steam team, they're not terrible, but they're, they're not 
great they're not 100 percent accurate either and the great thing that mattel did is that when they came along they totally revamped the faces and made them look what they look like in the tv series i mean that looks like dash without a doubt even if i don't like them that looks like dash so in terms of the history of these engines in my series They've never appeared in an episode. They did appear in a movie called uh, Heroes Origins way back in 2012. And I, I stick them on layouts and stuff, but they're just not a priority. So I don't know if you'll ever see these uh, these engines outside of a um, collection video. But it's these are just nice engines to have in my, um, I guess, my warehouse of Thomas Wynn Railway items that I've been collecting just in case. So we have Learning Curve Dash. Once again, not a bad item. And then we have Mattel Dash, which is very, very, you know, it has like the, the rounder edges and maybe a little bit more plastic, maybe a little bit more lightweight. Um, in terms of, you know, looking like Dash, though, this is pretty on point. I may not like the guy, but um, this is a very good rendition. So I saw this in stores and had to pick it up, and I don't know if I'll ever use them for anything important, but at least I have them in my collection um, in case I change my mind. So that is Mattel Fisher-Price. Dash from 2012-2013. So the next item I'm going to unbox is a bit of a weird one. It's not an engine or anything like that, but I still want to show this off. This is the Elevated Track Foundation. May seem like a weird item, but for anybody who builds Thomas Wooden Railway layouts, these are essential. Um, four risers are included, and two of them are your normal, I guess, one level up type riser, and then two are your, your double ones. And these, I think, are really, really coveted by people who build layouts because when you're um, subjected to a limited space, um, the only way for you to, to get around, you know, putting more lines and engines in your layout is to, to go above and beyond and to rise up um, to another level and then you can have tracks going over and under each other and it's really really important so um, These were actually sent to me by my good friend Ed's trains He went to a toy store near where he lives and he sent a picture of all the stuff they had and a lot of things caught my attention uh, I think I'll unbox a couple other things that he sent me um, But these caught my attention for sure um, the packaging actually Kind of a weird thing. I really like this packaging. It's so simple. You just have a picture of Thomas in the corner here. This plain wood look isn't the best, but I, I think it's it's really, really simple. It's not overwhelming. And really quick, let's see. We I'm thinking 2010, 2011. Okay. So these items have been around. Uh, this item has been around, I should say, since the 90s. Um, it's not like this was a recent thing, but it's gone through a couple of packaging changes. Um, let's see what else is in here. Oh, just tissue paper. Okay. And I actually have another one. It's the exact same thing, but since I'm talking, I'm going to unbox it at the same time and we'll take a look and see what we have. So, um, I'm always on the lookout for more risers because uh, it's one of those things you can all, you can't, um, reach a limit in my opinion of the amount of switches you have and the amount of straight track and the amount of risers for when you're building layouts because all that stuff is really, really important when it, if you want to keep expanding your layout and no pun intended, bring it to new heights and all that jazz. So I'm just gonna dump it out here. So we got two of these boxes, and like I said, in each of the boxes you got, uh, let's see, you got two of these big ones and two of the small ones. Um, but what you see here is that this double riser is actually removable. So right now we have a total of four small risers that go like this, and we have a total of four big risers that go up to that second level. But if you have no use for this extra level, you just don't use it. You just put it off to the side here. So oh, I was going to say, it's interesting that the wood pieces are not in plastic bags, but the plastic pieces are. And I'm guessing that's just done so that they don't really scratch up. So I've used these in my series before, if you know anything. I mean, if, if you're a fan of Thomas Wooden Railway and you've watched some videos for a while, you've probably seen people using these. These are a great way. They're, I think they're a more secure way to stabilize your upper levels of track. The normal blocks do a good job, but they're, the kind of crease area here where the track sits in is not as large as this. It's actually very tiny on those wood blocks. So we have this, this big... Um, 
kind of looks like a valley. This depth area right here really holds the track in place and keeps it steady. So I love using these. Um, and then we have this very well painted, in my opinion. A lot of nice detailing here. Just looks sort of like a bridge, or and uh, you just stick it up top there. And I know it's a little too long for the camera angle that I have. But you're on your normal, you know, so you're on the ground right here. We could call that level zero. You bring in one of these, you're up to level one. And you stack this on top of here, you're up to level two. And actually, you can you can go as high as you want. These, um, you can just keep stacking them so you can go up to, I guess this would be level three. And I could probably pull together all of these that I have in my collection and probably bring it up to eight or nine levels. It'd be really, really crazy and ridiculous. So um, honestly, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, let me just get this stuff out of the packaging. I'll line everything up for you guys to see. Um, you, I see these on eBay from time to time. They're never in the box, though. They're all, they've always been used, and I, I think you can definitely buy these items in uh, a used condition. You just have to be careful. Um, make sure, I think one time, you know, this is pretty strong plastic right here, but you do have to be careful that nothing's chipped off. And I mean, if you're a perfectionist and you don't want any scrapes or scratches on your items, then you're probably going to want to avoid these on eBay. Um, the regular, normal wooden railway building blocks are not bad. Um, these just kind of provide something different. I think these look really cool. I've done this a couple times in my series. I like when you get a long section of straight elevated track and you just line them up and it looks like a, you know, a purposeful bridge rather than just, oh, I have these wooden blocks that I'm putting along to elevate the track, that type of thing. So, let's see, let's get rid of some of this trash here. So they covered these. Oh, we do have some writing on the bottom of this. What does it say? Ghislaine Thomas Limited. Wow, 2001. Okay, I want to say, what do we got here? 2001. Okay, what I'm thinking is that these were, I may be totally wrong, this is just a theory. I'm thinking these were made in bulk around 2001, and then you see Tomy has come along and put their own copyright at the top here. I think these were made in bulk in 2001, and they just sat in a warehouse somewhere, and then Tomy came along and was like, oh, we should try to sell these off before we sell this uh, merchandise line to Mattel, and that's where they came along. So that again, that's just a theory. Um, but that would make most sense. I don't know. I, I get, you know, the, the dates on Thomas Wooden Railway items are confusing because, you know, you, you think of the 2003 issue that we have on all of the engine's wheels, even up to, you know, gosh, I'm looking at Sir Handel here. Is this still 2003? Yep. Even though he was released in 2012. Mattel came along. We have Mattel Dash. Oh, okay, that's when they finally changed the wheels. He is dated 2012. So we had a period of like 10 years where all the dates were wrong. So looking at dates in the Thomas Wooden Railway range is not the easiest thing sometimes. So that's just a just a theory. So let me put all these together. I love these high risers. They're so, so cool, and they're so useful. Um, so that's why, I mean, you saw in the box I paid $17.99. For, um, for each of them. I, Ed's Trains is a good guy, but he was not about to give them to me for free, which I did not expect either. So they're about 20 bucks a piece. And I don't know, are you really, are you gonna pay five? Is this worth five bucks to you? Probably not to the normal average Thomas Wooden Railway collector, probably not. But as somebody like myself, who's always building layouts and, you know, getting, um, sorry, getting, you know, higher and, um, going to, I, I, it's so cheesy, but honestly, going to new heights is a way to increase your layout. So let me just line these up really quickly and we'll move on to our next item. Here's what we got. We got four small risers. I call them level one risers. That's totally unofficial. So if you have a piece of track on the ground here, you put an ascending piece of track up to level one, and then you could put another piece of ascending track up to level two. You could even combine all these into one giant long thing that would probably stretch maybe that far or something like that. So anyway, pretty much just more risers for my series. I wanted to point them out because I don't, maybe some people out there don't know these exist. Pretty sure these were not made by Mattel. Mattel just came along with the normal blocks and they did come up with their own version of this. It did not have a plastic base. It was a wood stem, um, but it wasn't this giant plastic base. And I don't like using those because it, it doesn't have a base to sit on, on the carpet. So it's very shaky on the carpet. So these were just, from my understanding, these were just a learning curve and Tomy item. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this part of the unboxing video. Let me clear off the table and we'll move on to our next item.
All right, we're chugging right along in this massive unboxing video. Next item up for destruction, uh, the packaging that is, is a 2005 Learning Curve Diesel. This is a version of diesel that I actually do not have. Uh, let me see, yep, 2005 up at the top there. Just wanted to verify. This is an item I've had in my collection for quite some time, just never got around to unboxing it. And this is from the area, uh, excuse me, the era of these super, super safe, theft proof packages so I had to bring out the heavy duty scissors I'm probably doing this wrong but ever, see every time I do this then the cardboard just pops off and you still have diesel oh look at this okay so maybe I did need to clip it on the front there but I just wanted a, an excuse to use those heavy duty scissors so uh, I'm gonna try to keep the character card intact let's see we can maybe cut it just one more okay just pull to the side. There we go. Okay, so we got a character card and we got a pamphlet. Maybe. There we go. So character card, really quick. Diesel. Looking good. And on the back. Oily, scheming, and ever ready to stir up trouble in the shed. Diesel's characteristic smirk is a sure sign that somebody somewhere is in for a bit of trouble. That's actually a very good description. And this is so funny, Diesel's characteristic smirk. If you know about the next versions of Diesel that come after this one, not the not the uh, the next next or not the immediate um, successor to this version, um, which was the Tomy version that had the grumpy face. Basically, what I'm saying is that that characteristic smirk, which we all know Diesel for having is gone on the newer versions of Thomas Toys. He's smiling all the time, and Diesel's not a happy engine. That's so funny that they would bring that up because it is such an important part. Diesel's not a happy engine. And the same thing with Diesel 10, I'd say Horde, Lori, and George, and Bulgy. There are just certain engines out there that just are not happy, and so not everybody has to have a happy face, but I'm pretty sure somebody along the line, ooh, that's kind of cool, uh, yeah, this was 2005, so yeah, this would be the uh, 60th anniversary. I'm sure somebody along the line came along and said, Oh, Diesel's grumpy face scares children. We can't have him with a grumpy face. We need him with a happy face. So, yeah, that's where we are in life at this point. <laughs> it's so funny. I, you know, a couple years ago, I was doing the unboxing videos, and I was so optimistic about where the TV show was going, where the merchandise was going, and ever since then, it's just taken a nosedive. So... It's really, really fun to um, unbox these these guys and take a trip back in time and try to forget about what's going on in the real world. So, um, let's see. We got Diesel here. Like I said, I actually do not have this version of Diesel. He's got a little bit of something on him, just sticky residue. This thing's definitely new in box. I mean, you saw how, how troublesome it was to get out of the packaging. Um, 2005, this is before the lead paint recall, so there's no codes on the bottom. Um, the thing that really differentiates this diesel from the previous one, which I used in my series for a really long time, is that a little bit of a different face, and he's got like a red buffer beam, which as you will see, kind of disappears and comes back as time goes on, and it's, it's kind of a weird little detail that pops up here and there. So... This version of Diesel is really, really nice. Um, the first version of Diesel was sold for, you know, close to 10 years. I mean, this is 2005, so I don't have the exact date, but this is probably the first or the second year of this new version of Diesel. It's really, really nice. He's not a spectacular shape, but there's a lot of detailing, and, and the paint process that goes along there is very important. And the face is really good. Um, that first version face that was used for about 10 years was excellent. But this is the perfect, I'd say, evolution of the face. When you think of like season five, season six, maybe even season seven Diesel, that's what he looks like. So the toy is actually very on point. I guess I'm gonna have to come along with a rag or something and try to get rid of that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it's just interesting how it's there. You can, there you go, you can really see. It's just like a smudge or a mark or something that probably happened in the factory. And Diesel's been locked up in his packaging for close to 15 years. So it's finally nice to, to let him out and let him, let him have some fun. So I'll still be using the, the Tomy 2011 version of Diesel in my series because that is a really nice version of Diesel. Still got that grumpy face, but a little bit more of a CGI look. But this version of Diesel, I highly recommend. It's really, really nice. And I'm always looking out for new variants and different versions of characters that I already have. So 
This version of diesel, uh, very, very nice. Um, really no complaints for me. Super good. Very happy to have it in my collection. All right, here is an item that's going to be fun to unbox. This is this is bizarre, to say the least. It's uh, Thomas and the Stinky Cheese 3 pack uh, by Learning Curve. The date is under here. Looks like 2011 at the very, very top. Sorry I can't get a better angle. But yeah, this is from an era where, um, you know, these packs were, were floating around and some of them were cool and most of them were, were not cool, honestly. Um, you see on the side there, what is that, the Puppet Show, what is that? Puppet Show Mishaps 3-pack. I, I remember seeing that being sold in stores, and I was like, what in the world? Yes, it may be based off of a real episode, but I, I, if this, honestly, if this pack did not exist, I would totally not even remember that Thomas and the Stinky Cheese was an episode. And honestly, the only reason I bought this is because I, I bought this on my travels a little while ago. And you saw the front there, it was 1999. And considering this probably sold for 30 bucks plus way back when, I thought, you know what, what the heck? One of these days, this thing's gonna be selling on eBay for $100 new in box, knowing the way things are trending. So, might as well get it now. I had a choice either between this three pack, and I think it's the Thomas's Tall Friend three pack. Um, with the giraffe and like the apple orchard car and it comes with that really weird um, CGI Thomas face and so I was I was picking between the two and I was like man pick your poison I, I really don't know if there's a clear winner maybe probably maybe the best thing I could have done was not buy either of them because they're just so weird oh these are just falling out okay <laughs> so there we go it's very very interesting so, um, yeah, I got a little bit to talk about. There's the price tag one more time. Thomas and the Stinky Cheese, based on the episode Thomas and the Stinky Cheese. And at the back here, I actually didn't notice this till I was unboxing it. Ugh, sorry. Only at Target. Well, let's just say I did not find this at Target. Maybe back in its heyday, this was available at Target. And I do remember seeing, you know, these three packs. That was kind of their thing at Target. They had, they had some smaller engines. Um, individual engines I should say and then they had three packs and the smaller sets and then some of the smaller destinations like the useful engine shed or maybe like the cargo drop or the oil I don't know if it's the oil depot or the oil derrick whatever the smaller one is so all right so let's take a look at this three pack here it's it's interesting so we have a unhappy disgruntled Thomas with cheese splattered over him cheese covered Thomas yeah, th this is definitely from the era where Learning Curve had seem as, seemingly had no cares in the world and they had a budget where they could just make this stuff and whether it flopped or not wasn't really an issue. They were just churning out this stuff left and right. So um, definitely have, this is I believe the same face that was used on the paint splattered Thomas, but of course the detailing is a bit different. It's nicely done. You know, it's it, he's definitely covered in cheese. It's not like they just threw on a few splotches here and there and the side is completely clean or something like that. So this is a good version of Thomas. Um, yeah, just just very, very interesting, though. We have, so it's, it's cheese-covered Iron Airy. But the thing with this version of Airy and Bert is that only Bert had stubble. Um, Airy did not have any, any facial hair. And so... You know, I, I guess this is just how they were all produced. I don't believe this is a factor here. I think this is, it's so common that it was just mistakenly produced. Actually, let me bring back the packaging and read. Let's read that. I totally skipped over the back of the box, but maybe this will tell us what's going on. What a mess, says the box. Thomas has to deliver stinky soda or cheese to Bren, Brenhem Docks. <laughs> oh boy, Brendam Docks. Thomas tries to avoid the diesels as they are sure to make fun of the smell. As Thomas tries to hide, he's, he backs into Iron Airy and the stinky cheese splatters all over them. So this says that, you know, the story is that Iron Airy um, is the one to um, that is supposed to be included in the story. However, give me one moment, friends. I have my laptop next to me and I'm going to look up Thomas and the stinky cheese because I'm pretty sure... Um... Cheese covered Bert. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Trivia: the box mislabels Bert as Airy. So, 
I'm actually kind of confused as to what's going on here. Apparently, I the thing I should have watched the episode before I unboxed this, but it's from that timeline of Thomas and Friends where nothing was really super appealing about the episode. So the box implies that it's supposed to be airy that gets covered in cheese. The online thing I'm looking at implies that it is supposed to be Bert. And then the model itself says this is airy, but then the face says this is Bert. So I'm actually very confused as to what's going on here. Um, regardless, a very interesting exclusive version of either Aerie or Bert. I mean, I'm, I'm calling this, this says it's Aerie. I'm guessing it's Aerie. It's just Aerie with stubble. I, I don't know. I mean, this, this is very, very bizarre. Uh, but anyway, cool version of, um, Aerie slash Bert, one of those diesels. His face is a little crooked, but I, I will not be using this in an episode. Trust me. And then we have this cargo car. Launching cheese car. What a name. Um, this has been repurposed for a couple of things. I remember I had a Sodor book car that and so anyway long 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 story short basically it's like this cool cargo piece. It's got cheese on the side. I don't know how accurate that is to the the, the episode but somebody who watches the episode can tell me. Um, you have this mechanism in here. You click the cheese into place and it's so it's stuck in there. It won't fall out and then the Sodor dairy part um, basically, you're able to launch it. If you have the uh, new version of Scruffy, either in the, the Mattel version or the wood version, um, it has this launching mechanism. Um, this one's not as strong, though. Maybe if I play around with it a couple times, it'll, it'll get stronger. But I, uh, what I love about this is it, it's like you can aim cheese at people and just fire it away. So kind of good and bad. It's an exclusive um, kind of sort of deal here. It's, it's not your normal cargo car. Uh, I guess we should be uh, appreciative that it's not a normal cargo car. They didn't just slap, you know, some ordinary thing in this pack. Um, but then with other, this cannot work with other cargo pieces because this cargo piece has an indent here where this fits into place. So you cannot bring your stock standard sort of cargo piece and try to fit it into this car. So kind of a double-edged sword. But overall, I mean, it was 20 bucks. It's like 10 years old. I, you know, I, I willingly bought it. It wasn't like it just showed up at my doorstep and I'm forced to live with it. Um, like I said, you know, you'll notice years ago, half the stuff that I'm unboxing, I would have not have even bothered to buy just because it was so weird and just not my type. But now we're getting to the point with this merchandise. It's like, well, you either buy it when you see it or who knows if you'll ever see it again. This is definitely one of those deals. So yeah, that was Thomas and the Stinky Cheese three pack. When this was out in stores back in the day, I just kind of remember chuckling to myself and being like, who, who is going to buy that? And honestly, I don't think a whole lot of people bought it. So anyway, Thomas and the uh, Stinky Cheese three pack, pretty unique. That's all I'll say. We, we may have a possible factory error here. I, I don't believe it's a factory error. I, I just presume whoever was in charge of making this toy didn't understand the characters and their facial expressions and the episode and, and everything. So uh, I don't place too much blame there. It's just, it's more funny than it is, you know, fury, infuriating or something like that. So yeah, Thomas and the Stinky Cheese three pack. Honestly, <laughs> you don't need to get this item. If, if, you, if you're looking for rare stuff, then sure. But honestly, this is something you would be totally fine on passing up. All right, so I came prepared this time, guys. We have 2013 Mattel Scarlowy, and I also have the 2012 version sitting off to the side here so that we can compare. Um, yeah, as you can tell, I found this at TJ Maxx. Um, I actually have one of these new in the box. Um, so I have two versions right now, but I'm going to unbox this one since I already have one in the box. So I used the 2012 Scarlowy um, in my series. It's by Tomy. It's probably one of the the best Thomas Wooden Railway models ever made, and that's no exaggeration. It is a thing of beauty. However, Mattel did come along and make this 2013 version, which I'm going to take a look at here because I actually don't know how this looks, honestly. So let's see. So we got normal packaging here on the back. Yeah, 2012, but was released in 2013. And Scarlowy, this version of Scarlowy was part of that first wave because it does come with one of these cool pamphlets. So yay, I'll put that off to the side, add that to my collection. So this is Mattel Scarlowy. Um, it wasn't, I believe it wasn't sold in any sets or anything like that. And this is not a bad version of Scarlowy at all. In fact, you see at the back there, that's really cool. We got the windows. So it's going to be very interesting to take a look at um, Tommy Scarlowy and Mattel Scarlowy and try to see. I know there's one major difference, 
Um, but other than that, this is actually looking pretty good. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Little bit of a chip right there, if you guys can see. I think that's a chip. Um, yeah, who cares? <laughs> Uh, as you can see, as you guys can see, I'm I'm not as I hopefully I've kind of mellowed out as I've gotten older and I don't really care too much about things. So we got um, Tommy Scarloey on the left. We got Mattel Scarloey on the right. Faces are pretty similar. Um, I think I just by a little bit. I think I actually prefer uh, Mattel Scarloey just a little, just a little bit. The eyebrows are a little bit thicker, a little bit more defined. Put them side by side. Let's see. So the the one thing this Scarlowy has, the uh, Fisher, uh, not the Fisher Price, the uh, Tommy one has the side rods here. That's a nice little detail. We saw that with Sir Handel, and we're gonna see it with these other Tommy narrow gauge items that I'm going to a box later. Um, the name plates are a little bit different. They're a different shade, and there's also a railing here that is actually not included on the Mattel version. Um, the Mattel Scarloey's number is a lot bigger. Very, very big, actually. And slightly different color of paint. Um, the Mattel version, a little bit lighter. This one's more red. And then look on the back here. This seals the deal. Look, it's got, you got a lamp, you got windows, you got the number. This is, um, Tommy Scarloey. By far and away, um, superior to the Mattel one, but this Mattel one is not bad either. It's actually very, very nice. And if I didn't have the Tommy one and I didn't know how good it was, I'd say this is a pretty good, you know, Fisher Price Mattel item. So looking over it, it is really, really nice. I gotta love it. Um, you know, and I, I we're, we're uh, making uh, mountains out of molehills here because both of these items, all things considered, hey, at least they're painted. Hey, at least we get merchandise with Scarloey. Really can't be too picky. Actually, the one thing that this Mattel Scarloey has, it has a little bit of a railing right there. This one does not have that. So maybe props to Mattel Scarloey for that. And then this is just something that my Tommy Scarloey has, a little bit of a paint issue right there. Um, that's just something. It, th this is, I, I don't know if I am actually, um, I don't think I unboxed this Scarloey in one of my videos. Maybe I did. That was such a long time ago. But this actually came in a three pack with the Rock Crusher, uh, Crusher cars from the Blue Mountain Mystery era. So yeah, just the only, off the top of my head, more little detailing right here. Number's a little bit bigger. I don't know which one is accurate. I haven't looked at a picture of Scarloey in a long time. But honestly, we're fighting over very, very, very small details here. Just because I like this one more than this one does not mean this one is bad or anything like that. They're both fantastic. I still give the advantage, however, still give the advantage to um, Tommy Scarloey right there. But this was a very good look at the Mattel Scarloey. I'd only taken a look at it through the packaging because that's the only one I had. And then I actually, um, I bought another version, I bought another new inbox 2013 Scarloey from Hero the Japanese Train at our recent meetup. And that's, this is probably the one, both of them uh, have the TJ Maxx sticker on the back, so I'm not sure whose is whose, but anyway, that's why I was able to unbox this one. I still have one new in the packaging, but I thought I would take this one out, add it to my open collection and just take a look at it. So I'm very, very impressed with this item. It's a great item. Um, Tommy Scarloey is harder to find because he was only sold for one year, but maybe Mattel Scarloey is a little bit easier to discover if you're trying to find it on eBay or something like that. So very, very nice item. Very impressive. You know, before, before Thomas Wood was introduced and the years leading up to that, Mattel came out with some great items and Scarloey here is no exception. Here we go, it's time to unbox another destination in this massive unboxing video, the Sodor Cement Works. Definitely a very weird destination. I honestly have no idea why I bought this. This has been in my collection since the last unboxing video. Um, but here it is, and it's one of those weird, you know, roadway exclusive destinations that did not catch on, and learning curve went went hard and heavy with these destinations. But I figure I, I found it at a, found this at a really good price on eBay. This was not something I found in stores. Um, we got no character card, I'm guessing. Yeah, just a pamphlet. Okay, so I'm gonna try to make this destination review just a tiny bit on the quick side because this really isn't that cool of a destination, I'm gonna be honest. So if I can get it out of here, that would be helpful. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna... Is it hooked in somewhere? I can see through to the bottom of the box when I look through. There we go, okay. Yep, everything's out of the box. 
We got some box bloat, some filler here, but this is the, wow, it just, just fell apart. Look at that. Yeah, look at all this. I, I, they have to pad it some way, but you have these giant boxes. This actually has stuff in it, but you still have these giant boxes that are like, oh my goodness. So yeah, the Sodor Cement Works. This is an actual place on the island of Sodor. I believe when you take a look at the, um, the big map that I've talked about in the past, this is an actual place. Um, this is where Fergus works, you know, remember do it right Fergus all that. This is a cool little thing I mean, this is totally un Thomas Wooden Railway like but the fact that it is makes it so cool that man this is That's pretty bizarre. I'm not gonna lie. I got something else stuck in here um, I'm guessing these are the cement pieces Hopefully I'm right. They're not coming apart easy though gonna have a nice big cleanup after this. Yep. All right, so let's see how this bad boy works. We got we got the main destination here. It's a lot of plastic. This part is, pl oh no, this part's wood. This is plastic up here. I'm guessing you just, yeah. And it sits there and then your cement mixer comes along. Well, how's he gonna come along if, uh, Am I doing this wrong? Oh no, please don't let this be another grain loader thing. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's how it works. So on the side there, I know it's hard to see, it's at the very top of the camera. You load these in, and then you press down, and they both come crashing down. The, uh, the way this is set up though is not the best. This is, how is this supposed to, catch you know if it was if it was taller you could it would dump it right in there maybe I'm looking at this destination completely wrong but yeah this is <laughs> this is definitely not one of the the better destinations I've taken a look at it's it's road themed limited playability it seems these are gonna get lost really really easy some kids gonna choke on these but hey you have a little fancy gate here my favorite part without a doubt however is this this little guy right here? This is so weird. Be funny if he had a face. It's just a very unique shape and just very very odd. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet just because mostly plastic, plastic, plastic. This doesn't work like it's supposed to. This was just a design flaw, I'm pretty sure. And to top it all off, it's a road destination, so you can't even have your engines come in and save the day if you wanted them to. So, I think that's gonna do it for the Sodor Cement Works right there. Um, Whoever came up with this idea, you know, not not even the coolest destination on Sodor, let alone make it the coolest Thomas Wooden Railway item. But hey, at least you tried. We got this out of the deal, and um, I should show this. There you go. All right, and then you're, I guess that's that is you pouring cement right there. All right. So yeah, um, let's just try to forget this destination exists and move on to the next one, shall we? Here's another single engine being sold by itself. This is Easter Rosie. It's a couple of years old, I wanna say 2011. Yep, uh, up towards the top of the uh, screen. 2011 Galane Thomas Limited, like it always says. Um, so this is a learning curve item, and I know there is a Thomas, um, one of these that exists. In fact, I believe I have unboxed the Thomas one. I know it is in my possession. Um, apparently they made Thomas, they made Rosie. I don't know if they ever released them together, but this is the Rosie version. And if you can see there, price tag says $12.99 from Drods Derailment. I actually bought two of these. I'm gonna keep one in the packaging, and this is the one that I'm going to take out for you guys to see. So a bit of a strange item. Uh, before I forget, I love the bow up top here. That's a really nice touch. I believe Learning Curve did that with a couple of different items, um, most notably the Christmas, a couple of Christmas items that they released. The bow was, I want to say, red or green or white or, you know, some Christmas color like that. So I'm just tearing this bad boy apart. It's not really coming apart though. Let's see. All right, here's our opening. There we go, that was <laughs> not the, the most graceful landing by Rosie, but it's partially my fault. So here she is, just your stock standard normal Rosie from this era um, with just a happy Easter banner across the side. Um, let's see, nice big font and some Easter eggs on the bottom. 
and I don't know. I don't have a normal rosy next to me, but this this you know we got some cab windows here, but then the opening seems a little off. Maybe it's just catching my attention. You know, the the windows have a lining that really doesn't. Maybe that's how it it probably always is, honestly. Um, but you know, your your eye catches some things certain times, and it just makes you wonder. So, um, pretty good rosy model. Um, this is definitely the learning curve face. Um, this was also released very, very um, quickly after this version, there was a uh, Rosie with her CGI face, which I've never, ever liked. Never really liked a whole lot of the Tomy CGI faces that came around, but it's interesting that they would waste the time and the money to release Rosie with a brand new face. Um, that version's probably rarer than this version. I don't know the exact you know count on the production numbers or anything like that, but as you can see, Easter Rosie underneath, Learning Curve Brands, Inc. That's about it, pretty simple. Um, I'd say she's decently hard to find in this um, variation, but I don't think a whole lot of people want her. And this was just something I stumbled upon at Drods and I, they ended up having a couple left. So I, I grabbed two and I unboxed one here and gonna leave one in the packaging. So that's really all I have to say about Rosie. It's a nice little special edition if I ever do an Easter episode. I still use this version of Rosie in my series, so who knows? Uh, maybe this will pop up in the background of one of my episodes. So very cool, very cool model. Um, I like this. It's it's nothing crazy, no new paint scheme or anything like that, but just a, a custom touch here to give uh, Rosie just a little bit of a different taste than we're used to, what we're normally used to seeing her in. So we took a look at a special cheese covered airy and or Burt, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's take a look at the Fisher Price Mattel versions of Aerie and Bird. Now, if you watch my series, you know that I don't use um, these versions of these guys. I still use the Learning Curve versions. I think they look a little bit better. Um, I did have, I actually have, this is my third new in box Iron Aerie and Iron Burt that I've bought. The first one I had is a factory air. It comes with two Burts. The second one I actually kept in the box. I believe it is this one. I kept in the box, but then on my latest travels, um, I came across another one. I think it was only like 21 or $22. It was decently cheap. So now that I have an extra, I'm thinking, okay, I guess it's time for me to take these guys out and unbox them. So um, kind of like Easter Rosie, I got one of these still in the box, but now that I have a duplicate, I'll unbox these guys and see what they look like. So um, these are, Iron Aaron and Iron Bird are actually decently hard to find, the Mattel versions. They were, I don't think there was a second wave of these guys. So we have the first wave pamphlet here. We've got, a, I definitely have a, dozens of those. Um, slides out very nice. All right, let's take a look at these guys. So, you know, I have switched over to using the Mattel CGI engines in my series. There's very few engines that I don't use, and these are one of them. I don't think these guys look bad. I just think their predecessors, the learning curve versions, um, do a better job encapsulating who the characters are. The biggest problem I have is that their faces are almost identical, with the exception of the amount of facial hair that Bert has, hopefully, yep. Um, they're pretty much the same. And I guess you can say the same thing about the learning curve versions. Airy has no stubble, Bert has stubble. I just like their faces better. I especially like the grins that each of them have, the smiles that they that they have. I think they're really, really good. So here's what they look like. We can imagine them on some, some track right here. They don't look terrible. They got the rounded edges. Um, the paint is a little bit different. One thing I was kind of hoping to see, I believe, I could be totally wrong, but I think on their TV, models and even their CGI renders, uh, they have hazard stripes on the back. I could be wrong on that though. Now that I think about it, I might be wrong. But, um, you know, these these uh, Mattel versions just don't really catch my eye as much as the other ones. I've shown off Airy, so let's take a look at Bert. They're identically symmetrical. Bert just has uh, some more facial hair. He's got a little bit of a, um, not a goatee, but he's got kind of a mustache and beard combo there. Um, you know, these guys aren't bad. They actually look very, very nice. And, you know, if you have all of the Mattel engines side by side, these guys aren't going to look out of place. However, I don't know. I just have a soft spot for the original learning curve versions. And I didn't even grow up with those learning curve versions. Um, those were engines I actually bought when I was starting my series about 10, 11 years ago. So 
like I've said it before, these guys don't look bad. I'm, I just think the, the older ones look a lot better. Um, I, maybe it has to do with the way that they're smiling. Um, on the learning curve versions, they kind of have like a more of a devious face. They are smiling on the learning curve versions, but it's more sinister, you know. It's a very, it's a great, in my opinion, it is a great expression because it can work as, um, oh, these guys are just smiling, they're not up to trouble, or it could come across as, you know what, they're scheming something. They're, they're definitely up to trouble. So, um, I'm glad to have these guys out of the box. In the past, I've just looked at them just like this through the box, and I've seen pictures online, I've seen other people who have them I'm like you know what they don't look bad I think I'll stick with my learning curve versions but now that I have them out of the box I can definitely tell you guys they're a quality product um, these guys are pretty hard to find though you would actually have better luck I think um, finding some used versions on eBay versus trying to get even new or used Mattel Iron Airy and Iron Burt. So um, I love the diesels. They're very nice, you know, antagonists that can kind of turn friendly here and there, but you know, they're always causing trouble on Sir Top and Hats Railway. So I'm very pleased to have these guys in my collection. However, as it stands right now, I'm still going to use the Learning Curve Airy and Burt in my series. Okie doke friends, we're coming to the end of this first part of this massive unboxing video. I have a couple of items to unbox right now and then I'll do something else to end the video. Um, let's take a look at some pieces of track. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but anything brown label like this is really exciting to look at. So I have a couple of pairs of switches that I want to take a look at. I don't know, I have unboxed clickety clack track before. I don't know if I've looked at switches, but oh man, this is this is just a throwback. Let's see what the date of these are. Looks like 96, more than 20 years old, holy cow. So the story behind these is that when I was over on the East Coast, um, not too long ago, I went around with a, uh, to a bunch of toy stores with Enterprising Engine 93 and Jolly Good Idea Films, um, and we were just going around to a bunch of toy stores and happened to stumble upon these in a toy store that I, I bought a bunch of other stuff there. There was a lot of good Thomas stuff. This, however, was the only um, brown label, you know, stuff from the 90s that I was able to find. Um, but I really took a liking to these, not just because it's clickety clack track, but because of the price tag. Look at this, $4.99 for two switches. That's $2.50 a piece for each of these switches. And for those who don't know, that is a fantastic deal. These will pop up on eBay. Um, not for nothing crazy, but when you think about it, you know, the trains you're buying characters, but track you're just buying pieces of wood. So it's a little bit more subjective in my opinion. However, the price tag really got me, and it used to be more expensive. I Let's see if I can... These are these price tags are the type that they tear when you start to pull them peel them off. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that on there for right now, but as you can see it used to cost I'm guessing I'm guessing maybe 12.99, 11.99, maybe even 14.99 and they've marked them down to 4.99. That is incredible. So that's one of the reasons why I was so ecstatic when I found these. Not only is it learning curve track, but it for a great price too. So I said earlier in the review, you can never have enough track and switches, especially clickety clack stuff. I'm so excited to add this to my cl collection and hopefully I'll get to use it um, in my next layout. Let's see, oh, we've talked about these before in the past. A very 90s thing. Learning Curve wants to hear from you. You basically tell us your opinion and they'll uh, enter you to win a $100 savings bond, which is such a 90s thing. Uh, yeah, unconditional lifetime guarantee. Those were the days, weren't they? Uh, this is a place where you can uh, fill out your address and you kind of take a little bit of a survey there and then it acts as a postcard. So this place no longer exists. Learning Curve's not really a company anymore, I don't think. They were RC2 and then Tomy came in. So um, actually on one of these, it wasn't this exact thing. It was something else where you mail in the Learning Curve. A couple years ago, I sent one in. I put a stamp on it and filled out my address and everything. I sent one in just to see if anything was gonna happen um, nothing happened uh, just because the company doesn't really exist anymore so this is a pretty cool pamphlet it's from the 90s it's got all that classic stuff in there but I've taken a look at this before I actually got a couple more of these switches that I want to unbox these were also $4.99 the packaging is a little bit different because it's no longer from the brown label era uh, let's see it says ride the rails a Sodor 
Um, this six and a half inch single curve switch track always directs the engines where Sir Topham Hat feels they're needed most. That's a pretty good background right there. That's that was one of my favorite parts. Um, not not too not too prominent on this older style of packaging. They still had a little bit of a setup here, but the early 2000s packaging. Let's see, 2001. Okay, so this is right after the Brown Label era. Um, I loved looking at the pictures. It always kind of gave me ideas as to you know what I wanted to do with my own layout or anything like that. So I just got to figure out, trying to find out the best way to. I don't want to exactly tear these boxes apart. Um, I actually gave away most of my boxes. Um, I don't want to throw them in the trash because I know there's people out there who, who would like them. So I'm trying to keep these in decent condition in case I ever um, give them to somebody. That's why I didn't really want to take the price tag off either. So yeah, same thing. Even though it's not brown label, it's still clickety-clack track. And it's still really nice. And oh, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, this stuff has been in the box for close to 20 years. And you know, for it to end up here, Hopefully I can put it to good use. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera there. Um, I got two more of these, actually. I'll keep you guys entertained, though. Uh, a little bit of a story. When we were um, at this toy store and I was looking at these switches, I think Jolly Good Idea Films, um, he maybe bought one, but then I, I think I left a couple because they actually had several more. They only had one brown label, though, so that's the one that I bought, but they had a couple more of these. Um, so I spent $20 on each switches, which I think is a fantastic deal. Um, again, nothing crazy here, just more switches. I love it. I always need more of these big female switches. I have plenty of these. Always need more of these though. That's kind of the problem I've run into in the past when I make layout videos. So I believe Jolly Good Idea Films bought one. Um, I bought a couple as you guys can tell, but then they also had um, the Mattel version of a switch. And it's basically just the traction rail switches, but it's in a much bigger box. And instead of putting them on top of each other like this, they're more, they're actually, it looks like this. They're, they're labeled like this in the in the box. They sit like that, I want to say. And they had one there for sale. And I was thinking of looking at it because although I love clickety-clack track, I love switches, and so it doesn't really matter the, the type of track. I always I always stick to Thomas switches, though, because if you get into other, other brands of switches, the dimensions start getting a little bit off, and then it kind of wrecks your layout. So I always, that's why I only use uh, Thomas Wooden Railway switches. So I was looking at those, um, at that Mattel um, traction rail switches, and I was like, oh, if they're five bucks, I might get one of those two. No, two switches labeled or you know set up like this in the box they had those listed for $15 and I don't blame the toy store for that I just blame that was the Mattel suggested retail price but it was very interesting it's like these were on clearance I'm guessing but they still had the Mattel switches for three times the price. So then I very quickly, I kind of had an aha moment when I was like, well, I'm definitely not buying the traction rail switches from Mattel, and I'm definitely buying these clickety clacks uh, switches because it's a great deal. Um, five bucks, $2.50 each. You always need more switches. Right here, right now, I have enough switches to assemble a, a pretty, pretty good size switch yard. That's amazing in my opinion. So anyway, um, I'm done talking about track. I just thought it was a very nice, cheap way to get a couple more switches into my collection because I'm always looking for more ways to expand my layout. Let me get this table cleaned up and we'll take a look at our final item. All right, last item in part one of this gigantic unboxing video. And this item I actually refused to buy for a number of years. But here I am about to introduce it into my collection. It is the Thomas & Friends Wooden Railway Day of the Diesels Diesel 10. And the reason why I never bought it was because of that horrible face right there. Um, this is not something I found in a store. I actually did buy this off of eBay. I want to say for like $15 or so. Um, but yeah, I remember when Day of the Diesels came out, the show was in a very bad place at the time, and I was not interested in really any of the merchandise. Um, one of the things I wish I would have picked up, they had oil covered, oil splattered, Iron Airy and Iron Bird I wish I would have picked up. But yeah, this is another one of those Tomy engines. I have looked at a lot of Tomy engines in uh, part one, and there's more Tomy engines to come in part two, which is kind of funny. So um, yeah, this is an item that for the longest time, um, I did not want anywhere near my collection. 
However, um, you're going to see in part two, I'm going to be unboxing some more stuff that has to do with Diesel 10. So we could be on our way to looking at a discussion or something like that, if you get my hint. Um, this version of Diesel 10, not very good. It's just not good. That face is so, so creepy. Um, the uh, paint is actually a little bit darker from the previous version, I want to say. Or no, maybe it's a little bit lighter. Either, either way, the paint is not exactly right. Um, but I guess I shouldn't complain about this version of Diesel 10 too much considering what we have in the wood range right now. So, yeah, that face takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, it's interesting. He, he looks like a madman. He looks absolutely crazy. He looks like he's insane. And it's a far cry from that devilish grin that we all grew up with, I think. And it's, it's hard to believe that there's a new generation of kids coming along and they don't know Diesel 10 as this, this mean engine who's out to destroy the railway. They just know him as this cuddly little smiling engine with a claw. Oh, it's, it's not a mean claw. It's a nice claw. So um, what I've been able to see with this um, engine so far, there's some marks up here. Kind of looks like, I don't know, it's just like a deformity in the plastic with pinchy or something like that. They're not on this side. Uh, that's kind of interesting. The claw works the same way as the previous uh, learning curve version from Magic Railroad. Just moves back and forth. Doesn't open up or anything like that. Uh, however, I'm not sure actually if this part back here is plastic on the old version or not. But yeah, the biggest thing we got to talk about is this face. I, I, I just don't like this face. Um... There was a there was a Trackmaster Diesel 10 that was released around this same time, and we're talking 2011, 2012 here. Um, there was a Trackmaster version that was released around this same time, and although it didn't have that that gnarly, you know, devilish grin that we know, it it was more of like a, I'd say like a silent smirk. It was better than this face. This face is, you know, welcome to the Diesel Works, Percy. Like it's that type of face, and it's just like, oh man, this guy's insane. So. Underneath, we have Diesel 10. There's also some marking right here. I've encountered that on a couple of items in this unboxing video. Uh, just some residue left over. And then, yeah, this is a Tomy engine, so it's got all of the recall codes and all that jazz underneath. So from the side here, it looks really nice. Uh, no complaints. You know, you still got the claw. It's You got bogeys on there. It's fully painted. I mean, we really shouldn't be complaining. Even on the back here, they've included, you know, the windows and stuff. But then as you spin it around, it's like, oh my goodness, what were they thinking? Um, hindsight 2020, though, that's funny. Before I say that, it looks like his claw is off center. You guys see that? It's kind of, it's kind of shifting. Like if I were to put it in the middle, I put it right there, and it's just kind of off to the side a little bit. There's a little bit of movement. That that's uncomfortable right there, though. I it needs to be you know in the middle for me, but. I, I, if it's not obvious, I won't be using this Diesel 10 in my series or anything like that. So, yeah, hindsight 2020, you know, knowing what we have now, this this is awesome. This is absolutely fantastic. Even though he's smiling, it's like, well, he, he looks like a basket case. He doesn't look like he's very mentally stable, which is kind of funny. He's got this giant claw up here that he could totally wreak havoc with. So, um, yeah, it, it's like perfect version of Diesel 10 up until up until the face. And really, that's the only major difference between this version and the Magic Railroad version. I do know off the top of my head the paint color is a little bit different. But even the side detailing, I mean, Diesel 10 is, has a very unique color. He definitely stands out. Um, and with this face, he draws a lot of unwanted attention upon himself. So, anyway, uh, I think that's going to do it for the first part of this unbo unboxing video. And keyword there, first part, because there's a whole nother part that we have not got around to. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't like long videos. I don't really like longer videos. I know the audience doesn't like longer videos. But if you have lasted this long, thank you so much. Um, be sure to head over to part two. I'm gonna be unboxing, I'm gonna look behind me here. I'll be unboxing some more single engines, a couple of destinations, some three packs, and even that special Brio wooden railway engine that's not Thomas related, but it's still a wooden railway item, so I'm going to take a look at it. Um, I have the uh, trash piling up uh, around me. It's getting quite big. Um, that's something to look forward to as well. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy these unboxing videos, and I will see you in just a little bit on part two.